and welcome back to another All Heart video. So I am currently in my children's shared bedroom. I've been getting quite a few questions from parents to share our space in order to give them some ideas of the types of areas and materials that I have included in their Montessori inspired type bedroom. So that is exactly what I wanted to do. So their previous room, they also shared a room, but it was a much larger space. Um, so I did have to kind of accommodate for that. So again, while you're looking at all of these items throughout the video today, keep in mind that you will have to accommodate for the space that you have. So I don't, even though I'm going to be explaining different categories that I feel should be included, I don't have every single category within this room, but it is within close proximity of this room and it is at their disposal and it is very easily accessible to them. So it's really, it really wasn't necessary for me to try to cram so many objects and furniture and materials into this one bedroom. I'm going to try to go into as much detail as possible as to my furniture pieces and my choices and why I decided to choose one thing versus another. And I'll give you a few other examples of furniture pieces that may work for your space even better. So if you do like these types of Montessori videos, make sure to hit that like and please subscribe. And with that, let's go ahead and get started on today's video. So let's start talking about the different types of items that you will want to include in your room. The first and most important being that floor bed, which is iconic of Montessori. So there are so many different ones to choose from. It's really going to be a matter of preference. Um, if you have a very, very young child that you are transitioning to their first floor bed, you may want to include something more like this one, which has that enclosure so that it's a little bit more similar to a traditional crib, but it does still have that small access for your child to be able to get in and out of bed on their own. Uh, the other very popular one that I see all the time on Instagram are the ones that look like little houses, so something more like this one. So I decided to go a different route and I found these contemporary styled beds. Now, they're not meant to be floor beds. The only thing that I did was leave off the four legs, which would have raised it about eight to 10 inches off the floor, which is still not bad in my opinion. And I like that versatility. So if my children want to have their beds raised in the future, I know they will, then I don't have to go out and purchase a brand new twin size bed. So that was absolutely uh, very important to me. The other is aesthetically, it just really suited our decor in the rest of the house with the rest of their furniture. And it was just a very nice clean look. And I thought, even if they were to change out their pillows or any of their other decor, that it would still tie in with those beds. Now let's talk about dressers. So if you're going to look up Montessori styled bedrooms on Instagram and Pinterest, and you're going to see that a lot of families like to include these very beautiful and aesthetically pleasing freestanding wardrobes, like hanging wardrobes, where you can lay out a couple of their items. It's um, down to their level, so it's not very high. They're able to reach out and pick out their clothes that way. Absolutely beautiful and definitely something that I would consider getting for either my son or my daughter once they decide to have their own room. But because our space is a bit limited, I didn't want to include one in there because I needed something that was going to fit more articles of clothing. If you do have a younger child though, I do highly suggest the uh, freestanding wardrobes just because that really, although they are still getting that freedom of choice where they get to choose their clothing, they are not going to be confused by too many options, which is what you don't want to do. 
So laying out just, you know, maybe like two or three shirts, uh, you know, two or three pants and so on and so forth will make it a lot easier for your child to be able to pick and choose their clothing. Now, because we live in a two-story house, I wanted to not have to be going up and down the stairs since the rest of their clothing is upstairs in one of the other bedrooms. I wanted that ease for myself and for my children. So downstairs, um, in their bedrooms, I decided to go with these two contemporary style dressers. Now, I love that these are wide because it fit a lot more items. And I love that they weren't too deep. So that way they weren't having to pull out the dresser all the way out in order to sort through their clothes. And I keep a variety of clothing in there, but again, I didn't want to give them a crazy amount of options for clothing, so try and keep it simple. I did still keep it simple. So like for my son, he's got his baseball uniforms and anything that he would need for baseball in the top drawer, as well as two sweaters, one for going out and one for just kind of being around the house or going outside. In this middle drawer, I have some shorts, some pants, and then also a couple of t-shirts. And on the bottom drawer, he's got all of his pajamas, uh, boxers, socks, and any of his swimwear. So again, I kept it nice and simple. Everything is organized. He's able to see everything and he knows exactly what drawer is specific to what. So he knows where to go to pick out his clothing depending on where we're going or what activity we're doing. And I kept the same layout the same for my daughter. So that's very important, making sure that they know exactly where things are supposed to go, where things are supposed to be sp uh, stored, where they're supposed to go to access those items and be able to access them, which is one of the other reasons why I chose these dressers because they are not very high so they have access to all three drawers and they're able to open and close and see the contents um, in each of those three drawers the other thing that i liked is that there was some space underneath so you can see that i also provided a small basket to keep whatever they wanted so for my daughter she likes to keep her bows and her um, any any items for her hair um, like hair ties and headbands and she keeps an extra brush in there, her hairspray, like if we're going to ballet. But um, they know exactly where to go to retrieve their items and to put their items back, which is also incredibly important in order to keep that space nice and clean and tidy and organized and for them to have that sense of routine. So the other thing you may want to include is a mirror, whether that be a full length mirror or just a mirror where they can see, you know, at least the top half of themselves while they're getting dressed. And this could help them with um, fixing buttons if they need help or uh, fixing up a zipper when they're doing their hair. My daughter loves to be able to remove her hair items, place them on that little shelf and brush her hair or so that she can see the placement of her hat or her bows or anything like that. Um, so I feel like that's incredibly important to provide within that bedroom space. The other thing is a small shelf where they can place some of their toiletries. So as you can see, I included a small freestanding um, shelf that I attached to the wall. Again, I didn't want a lot of furniture pieces to take up a lot of floor space. I wanted to leave that floor space for the most part nice and open. So I was utilizing our wall space. So another thing that you may want to include is an area where they can hang their things, such as an area for them to hang their coats or their sweaters, their hats. As you can see, I included this wall hanger that I was able to find at an antique store, and it was absolutely perfect. Not only did it match the rest of the furniture really well in color, but aesthetically, it just looks really, really nice and it's got more than enough areas for them to be able to place their hats, their scarves, some of their sweaters. My daughter likes to hang her different purses on there, so I made sure to include that. So that is something that if you already have an area where they can hang up their coats and their jackets, like a washroom or something, 
then that's something that you don't have to include again in their bedroom. So keep that in mind as you're kind of looking at the items and I'm uh, letting you know the types of items that you may want to include. These are just suggestions. It's really going to be what's going to accommodate your family, your needs, your space, your budget, all of those things. And because I am working with a small space, things that I already have near their room, such as a hamper um, is, is another one. The laundry room is directly behind their bedroom. So I didn't include a hamper directly in their room. So they're able to walk just, you know, a few feet over to place their clothes behind that wall. And they know exactly where to place their soiled clothing so that it's easy for me to get to and to wash. And that way I don't find clothes all over the floor or the bed or the dresser or, you know, anywhere where it's not supposed to be. So, so long as your child knows where items are supposed to go, where you've given them a spot directly for their things, where it's become routine and where it's accessible. That is the most important thing. So don't think that you have to include every single item in their bedroom. The other thing that you may want to include if you don't have um, this already in some other part of your house is perhaps a small area where they could sit down and read and relax. Now you can make it very simple and just place a small shelf near their bed and they could just sit on their bed and read and they have access to a few books. I decided to include just a very small area since I do have a larger area upstairs in one of their playrooms. So all it is is this um, back supported pillow along with another more decorative pillow in case they want more comfort. And then in this small basket I was able to include some of the books that we're reading just before bed. They also have uh, one or two coloring books in there and some colored pencils in case they don't want to go upstairs and they just want to color quietly or read quietly in their room. So the other thing that you may want to include is a waste basket. That way they know exactly where their trash is supposed to go. I did include one in their bedroom, even though they have access to one off the kitchen, which is directly next to their room. Um, I wanted something there just to have that ease and so that, you know, it's just easier for them to throw something away in their room. Um, it's accessible to them. It's easy to clean out. And if they're drawing in there, if they've got a wrapper or if they have, a, you know, if they're blowing their nose and they've got their tissue, it's just very easy for them to go directly to their wastebasket and throw that away. So let's talk about art pieces. So again, that's going to be something that is a matter of preference. I would suggest that you keep the pieces, you know, uh, light and airy, nothing that is too overstimulating. But I mean, it, it really all depends on you. If you like uh, um, those pops of color and that's how you wanna introduce some pops of color into their room, it's by their artwork, then, you know, feel free to do that. Just make sure that you keep it at a level where it's going to be appreciated by them as it is their bedroom. So I decided to go with these botanical like scripts just because my daughter absolutely loves them. She loves anything that has to do with plants and butterflies. And I thought that this was a beautiful, although neutral in color, it still has those pops of color and it just worked really, really well with our space. For my son, he is very into anything that has to do with the solar system and it does have to do with some of the things that we are currently learning. So I thought that it would be perfect to add that to his side of the room right above his dresser. The two larger horse portraits, they are so gorgeous guys and I was able to find those at Target. Hopefully they're still in stock, but they are very lovely. They're very big and they really do become the focal piece besides the beds, they are the focal piece in this room. And since both of my children absolutely love horses, I thought this was the perfect tie-in to bring the space and make it a lot more cohesive. So I didn't feel the need to include a lot of things on the walls. I thought keeping it minimalistic and simple with just those few pops of color would be perfect. So let's talk about toys because some Montessori families that 
are a little bit stricter than others, prefer not to have any types of toys or distractions in their room. And that's because they want your child to associate their bedroom with sleep as opposed to um, having them associate that with play. So if you do decide to include toys, I would suggest that you just have, you know, a, a few selected for their bedroom in case they want to play in there. I decided to include some toys because, again, I wanted them to have those pieces in their room, especially their favorite pieces. So things for my daughter, like her My Lai Mice and some of her houses and accessories, I decided to include because that is something that she plays with every single day. And if she doesn't want to go upstairs to play with them, then I'd rather she, you know, be able to stay downstairs and play with them downstairs. And again, it's all a matter of that ease for her. So, um, like I said, it's a matter of preference and how strict you're going to be with allowing your children to have toys in their room or not. Um, like I said, I did. My son has his Holtz Tiger castle in his bedroom along with a few of his Holtz Tiger knights, kings, and queens, and they lay those out on the floor and they play with them all the time. So I decided to leave that downstairs as well as their wooden train set. So I chose pieces that were um, not too, too distracting, pieces that were their absolute favorite so that they wouldn't have to go upstairs to play with them and just pieces that just really worked within that space and wouldn't take up too much space and again you know it, it's going to be up to you what you would like to include in their bedroom so another thing that you may want to include is an area where they know how to uh, where to place their shoes or where to put their shoes on again our space is a little bit small so because their room is right beside our entrance area they have access to that right outside of these glass doors. So they have an area where they can sit down, where they can put on their coats, their shoes, um, and also an area when we come back home, they know exactly where it's supposed to go. So as soon as we walk in the door, all of us take off our shoes so that we're not you know, tracking mud or dirt or anything like that. We take off our shoes before we walk in and they know exactly where it goes every single time. And that is it, you guys. I hope that I gave you plenty of examples. Hopefully I was able to answer a lot of your questions. If you still have other questions, please leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. And remember to ring that notification bell so that you are notified of when I next post a video. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We'll see you back here very, very soon. Bye.